Well, we have come together to be founding members of the Custom House Bookshop. We want to inspire um, young people to know that we've made big contributions as black people um, and people um, from the BAME community that the young people need to know about. This is their history. So this is a way of us being able to inspire. We have over a hundred years lived experience in the community. So we know perfectly exactly what is needed. We're going to be running it exactly as we need it. We need it to have books that reflect our community. We need it to be totally inclusive. We are going to be concentrating on a, um, a real emphasis on children and health. These two things are vital to make something work properly. We cannot have children learning if they're hungry. So they sort of go hand in hand. We need to make sure that they understand that reading for pleasure is the most important thing they can do. If you, if you cannot read, your entire future is stunted. The way forward for our youth and our community is to educate people not in isolation, but involvement with local libraries, local schools, and other organisations and groups. The books open up the world to you. It's, and I think we, in Custom House, we've been deprived of a, a lot of things, um, and we've got a lot of schools in the area that actually do need the community to be behind them and work with them to teach our children. This event is celebrating the life of Frank Bailey. He was a migrant who came to the UK from Guyana and we've called it Frank Bailey, a life of service. We're so very lucky to have local historian Peter Williams with us tonight to give a talk on one such individual who helped shape Britain today. I present Peter Williams. Um, I've long had an uh, interest in the history of the fire service and I started working on a history of the local fire brigade in um, the mid-1980s. And during the course of that research, um, I started to get interested in black firefighters. And that's the background to this evening's talk. Now, um, it's been billed as a talk about Frank Bailey, but I want to talk a little bit uh, wider um, about uh, some other black firefighters as well, locally. And uh, also just give a very brief sketch at the beginning about the history of immigration in what is now Newham. In the 18th and 19th century, this area was largely farmland and they brought in uh, Irish labourers to work in those fields. And the first Catholic Irish parish in Stratford uh, was founded in 1717. So, as Karima indicated, immigration <coughs> in this country goes back a very, very long time. And then in the 1850s, with the development of what became the Royal Docks in Dockland, uh, there was a further explosion of immigration. We believe that when you come to the UK, whether you're born here or you come here, that literacy is very important, especially with young children, because if you cannot read and write and cannot understand English, it's very hard to keep up at school. Once children fall behind, it's very difficult for them to ever catch up again. We believe if we can promote literacy, not just by the bookshop, but by the breakfast club, the after school club, and the reading club that we're creating. When you go to the library, there's, it's quite, there's quite a low um, amount of books that represent my children, that represent me, that maybe represent the Indian culture or that represent the Chinese culture. And so this is where the bookshop comes in. We're doing books that represent the people who actually live in the area. So they can come and enjoy and see people that represent them. That's why this bookshop is quite important. And it's different from a library. OK, you're not borrowing books, but we will be doing interactive stories. This event is the first event organised by the Custom House Bookshop. What we hope to do is raise awareness of Frank Bailey and his great contributions and also 
start the process of dealing with people like Frank, whose stories are magnificent but remain untold. We refer to them as the hidden histories. We believe there are many hidden histories of migrants and BAME people who've made great contributions to life in the UK, and we would like to celebrate and raise awareness of these people and the contributions they make. Um, so I'm now going to come to my first black firefighter. This is Arjan Advani. Advani got a, a degree in uh, Bombay University, and then he came to Britain in 1938 um, to study further. For some reason that's not entirely clear, Advani decided he wanted to be a firefighter, and um, an arrangement was made between the High Commission and um, this fire station just here, um, that Advani should join the West Ham Fire Brigade. Um, that's a fairly extraordinary thing, because the Fire Brigade at that time, as you can imagine, was an extremely white working class uh, institution. He must have been quite a tough individual, because I, I imagine he faced various kinds of discrimination, <coughs> name-calling, uh, within the brigade at that time. Here he is again on, on the left, and uh, this, is, this is a picture, uh, this is wartime firefighting. So this is during the Blitz, he was firefighting in Custom House at a school fire, and that thing bucked up, and the metal thing rammed into his leg and he was quite seriously injured. The reason why I show the story of Advani is it is often said, and you'll see this all over the internet, that Frank Bailey was the first black professional firefighter. But that's not quite accurate, because Advani clearly was a paid, I suppose it depends on your definition of black as opposed to Asian, but certainly if you're talking of black and minority ethnic, Jimmy Advani uh, was quite a few years before uh, Frank. So Frank was born in um, British Guyana. He attended local schools there and he became an engineering apprentice and then he decided to sign up with a German merchant ship and he worked on that ship. He worked on merchant ships and ended up in New York where he decided to settle for a short while and he found work in a hospital in New York uh, initially as a porter and then he started to work for the physiotherapy department as a medical assistant and during that time he led a successful walkout uh, of staff against um, the hospital's racially segregated um, dining facilities. So Frank showed an early propensity to a sort of activism and it, through the Fire Brigade's union he heard, Frank heard that um, the Fire Brigade was refusing to employ black people and he decided to challenge that approach. And, I mean, he must have been a very courageous, tough individual. Because he took the decision, which I think is a very brave one, that the, the, the way to deal with this issue was to join the fire brigade. Um, and uh, so he may have had some firefighting experience previously. The way he decided to challenge it was, was, was by joining the fire brigade. He joined... Um, what was then called the West Ham Fire Brigade, um, which covered this, this area, in, um, in the mid-1950s, and he was posted to Silvertown Fire Station, in the south of the borough, in the docks, and he quickly uh, became the Fire Brigade Union rep in that uh, fire station, and um, started to work within the Fire Brigade Union for, for progressive issues. And Frank clearly was very politically active, and um, he stayed with the fire brigade for about 10 years, but I think he saw very, very little progress for black people in the fire service during that period he was in the brigade. And in the mid-60s, he decided to leave the brigade, and um, he basically took a kind of career change. He then specialised in uh, mental health and became a psychiatric social worker in West London. And he was involved in legal proceedings around representing children in, in you know, adoption, custody, divorce, that kind of thing. 
He retired from his social work career in 1990, um, but he continued in his retirement to follow up you know, his interest in the um, African politi politics, uh, colonialism, and, and the Caribbean uh, diaspora. Um, and he was a great champion of, of equality, uh, black rights, and um, campaigned continuously on all sorts of issues. He's the first black firefighter on a permanent basis. There were ad hoc firefighters during World War II, but he's the first one that we're aware of who served continuously as a fireman as a professional career. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 his 10 years of service was with the West Ham Fire Brigade, which was a separate brigade, and, and this is his uh, 2016 um, brigade funeral. So he was given a, a, an official send-off by the uh, London Fire Brigade. Uh, another black firefighter who, um, when I was doing my research, I came across, um, again, with a, a rather different but very interesting career. So this is George Arthur Roberts. Um, he um, was originally from uh, Trinidad. Then, in uh, the Second World War, uh, he was by then in his mid-40s, so he was too old to fight as a soldier. Um, so he volunteered to join the, um, the auxiliaries of the London Fire Brigade, and he was posted to uh, New Cross Fire Station. Uh, he uh, was not a full-time professional firefighter. Um, he was an electrician by training. AFS stands for Auxiliary Fire Service, so these are, um, they worked alongside the professional fire service in World War II, um, and then at the end of the war, he left. I'm just going to bring the story right up to date. So this is um, government data about the proportion of uh, black people in the fire service uh, workforce across the country. Um, there are one or two notable uh, sort of leaders in the fire service. This is the first guy who um, <clears throat> became the head of uh, any of the emergency services in Britain. So Wayne was uh, Borough Commander for Newark, so he, he, he was the most senior London Fire Brigade officer in, in Newark about eight, nine years ago. Um, and then last year, 2019, uh, Wayne Brown was uh, appointed Deputy Chief Fire Officer, West Midlands Fire and Rescue. She was brought up in South Wales. Her father was from North Africa. Uh, and was Jewish, um, and her mother was, I think, white UK, turned her life around. She joined the South Wales Fire and Rescue Service, uh, did well. Um, she then went to university as a mature student, and eventually uh, got a doctorate in um, psychology, and wrote, wrote her doctorate on, on um, issues uh, to do with command structures in um, the British Fire Service. And then last year she was appointed Chief Fire Officer of West Sussex Fire and Rescue, which is where she still is. Uh, definitely uh, in the pipeline towards getting a physical bookshop. Um, this is something we're doing hand in hand with the local authority. We are hoping to use one of their meanwhile shops a meanwhile shop is a shop in an area designated for re, um, regeneration where in about five or six years perhaps that building will be demolished. Meanwhile, we have um, local businesses again supported by the local authority encouraging them to have grassroots business starting in these shops instead of them being derelict. So hopefully we will be an established bookshop by the time that happens. We are also very much looking into the idea of having an online bookshop as well. Um, you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me down in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with glue? Because I walk like I've got iron wells pumping in my living room. Like the moons and the suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head 
and lowered eyes, shoulders failing like teardrops weakened by soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awfully hard? Because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise. I rise. I rise. Thank you. It's really good actually. Um, I completely agree that I feel like there's not enough black representation in terms of our history and as someone who's mixed race myself I find it really difficult just learning about black history from a slavery perspective growing up. So I find it really, it really helps me to find that my history has not been minimised when I see influential black people in history like this. Um, I thought it was just really interesting to learn about the new Ameria and um, yeah it's just very interesting to hear more uh, ethnic minority stories um, which are always hidden <laughs> somewhere. The event, I think it was really nice that you can actually come and um, just hear from different people and it's interesting about the firefighters as well because I didn't know basically anything so I definitely learned some things today so it was lovely. Chairman? So in the bag, in one bag, we have and these are just the vegetarian option of it. So that's the vegetarian part. Yeah, I think it was absolutely amazing. You learn a lot here and uh, honestly if you have a, the time, come down and you will learn a lot about black culture and I'm actually glad to be here. So. What I took from it was that the history of um, black firefighters in the London Fire Brigade or just in this part of the country is actually a lot longer and there's a lot more to it than I ever realised. It's not something you think about on a daily basis, but it's important and it's really interesting to know about. 
Cause I'm so fit.